Uh, okay, it's 4.30. Let's get started. Um, so to explain the early hours, uh, it's just summertime and I want to get more summer sun time before, you know, I want to get all the work out of the way, the halfway point of the day. So I get out, you know, before 5 or around 5 instead of, uh, before 6 and around 6 instead of, you know, after 6. Um, uh, so there is a theme today, a really, really important theme, but before that, um, just because I put this at the end of the video and people miss it, to hand it, and a lot of people are asking me how to get my stuff, their stuff critiqued, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering how it's possible that nobody knows how to get, some people out there don't know how to get their stuff critiqued, because I talk about this everywhere at the end of every single video, so I'm going to start talking about it at the beginning of every video, I've been talking about it at the beginning of every video, just click on the little Google Plus icon right over here. <laughs> um, this will take you to the community where you can join, post your work. This wall is where I choose everything. This wall is where I choose everything to look at, and it's got categories. So uh, miscellaneous work for community critique, challenge submissions, local meetups. So for those who want to meet up locally, please use this carefully. Discussions, announcements, polls, class notes, 14-day challenge, landscape, music for drawing, art books, and studies. Um, so many, many different uh, categories to post in, and I look through them, and I find a common theme or thread to cover for the day, and if your work fits into the theme that I discover, then we go through it, just like today, um, we're going to be talking about male faces. Um, another big thing is Patreon. If you're interested in supporting me, just click on the little Patreon icon here as well, and join. You can join as a, just a watcher to help me reach my goal of a thousand patrons, um, which is probably going to take a long time, <laughs> considering how, how it's growing. Um, or you can get the full educational category, which is the apprentice tier, and you get all kinds of perks and all kinds of private videos and streams uh, on Patreon as well, and assignments, and a constant live Discord channel. Um, and you can post any work that you want, personal work, into the critique uh, ch text channel of the Discord, and I'll critique it and write stuff up myself personally. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, you have all of this available to you. Uh, so let's get started. Close that. Nope, that's not what I wanted to open. Um, let's talk about male faces. Uh, so, just so I don't get confused, let me put all the extra stuff here on the side. Okay, um, so what we have here is this constant issue with these really, really girly faces. Just really, really girly proportions, and the only thing that's really keeping these male faces afloat is the jawline. That's like, that's like it. Uh, some of you are just straight up breaking some really, really fundamental rules over here. Some are beauty rules, some are um, anatomy rules. So, you had a reference, you had a full-on reference, and for some reason you still thought it was necessary to give them girly cheekbones. So it looked right to you to have girly cheekbones. Uh, so look at how much higher the cheekbone is than the forehead. Uh, so for males, and I want to see all these notes written down as a list and all that, like criteria for male face, the tiny little nuances or details that escape the, 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 the common plebeian eye. Um, one of the biggest ones is that the brow bone of all males is very heavy, very low, very Neanderthal-like. Um, <laughs> and I use that term very specifically. Uh, but uh, they kind of just drop very, very low, causing the eyebrow to be missing that very defined female arc in the eyebrow. Um, so before we get into painting anything, let's look at Google. Okay, so nearly all these, um, we're going to find some weird shit. I'm sorry if there's weird shit on Google. There's just going to be <laughs> all kinds of weird shit on Google. Um... Uh, but uh, let's take a look at some male faces. All right, thank you. Uh, flat eyebrow, very heavy brow bone. Even in the girly looking guys, even guys that are just like universally handsome, big eyes, plump lips, feminine nose, of, you know, very, very girly still. But they still work within the male proportions. Neckline is thicker than jawline or as thick. Chin is massive. Um, what's that Chin superhero from Fairly Odd Parents? I forget what his name is. Chintacular? What is his name? The Magnificent Chin? Anyway, straight up massive chin. Uh, large nose, eyes close to each other. How do we know that? Because if we were to extend a straight line from the nostrils upward, they would actually be ahead of or at the inner, inner corner of the eye. 
and when an, and a nose is small for females, we tend to have that in inside uh, the nose. Uh, inside the eye line. Sorry, I'm just trying to find good examples here. So we have, <laughs> ignore the bloated face. I don't know if this is on purpose. I don't know if this is photoshopped. I think it is. <laughs> it is. So we have inner line. Nostrils are wider than this line. Line. Nostril line. Okay. This guy is, is really pretty looking. Very, very pretty. Could be a woman with a beard. Um, and that's because of eye size. But still, nose is a bit wider. And mouth is very uh, full, so typically male mouths tend to be a little bit thinner. And when you do have males that have a kind of more feminine features, that's when they're considered cute or handsome. And let's look at handsome male. As you can see, I did a search called Handsome Squidward. Just making fun of my friend. Okay, so... Um, flat eyebrows, nose is wider or at the inner eye line. Flat eyebrows, nose is wider or at. Massive chin. Crimson chin, there you go. <laughs> Trust my fans to know this random trivia. Flat eyebrows, okay, eyes close together. Nose is wider or at. Okay, so you guys are breaking a lot of rules by giving the eyebrows arcs because if you look at beautiful female images, I really hope no nasty shit comes up. Okay, some weird shit came up. Uh, let's just let, let's just stop here. Uh, eyebrow arc, space under the eyebrows, lots of space, very rounded forehead uh, and brow bone, leading to um, like a dome-like forehead that isn't heavy. Okay, so very, uh, very baby-like, cherub-like. All right, space, eyebrow arc, rounded forehead, not as heavy or low. All right, so this is lots of tons of makeup, so, you know, work with it with, with how it is, but really defined eyebrow arc, space under the eyebrow, and then rounded forehead. Um, the nose is at or within the inner corner line, as you can see line of the nose, inner corner of the eye. The nose is much smaller. So these are the defined differences. Nose and mouth don't have a lot of space in between them. But look at all these male faces, really extended distance between nose and mouth. All right, because you got to make space for all the, that mustache. Okay, so when you have to know when you're looking at handsome male because he's handsome and rugged or handsome male because he's cute and baby-like. There's a bit of both out there, um, but let's just start with these adjustments, and um, hopefully it'll help you guys get better read with the males that you're drawing. So this nose right here, just trying to find my pen. This nose is a little bit small, so I'm just going to extend the nose, and I'm going to shrink the space in between the nose and the mouth. You can leave the lower lip thick. It's as long as the upper lip is thinner, or significantly thinner. The shape of the eyes is a little bit overdrawn. It's, it's very, very line dependent. I'm really not sure I understand what you were doing with the eyes, why you draw eyes like this. You should be studying eye anatomy, functional eye anatomy. And then you've got the eyebrow arc going on here. Okay, so before kind of like perking it up, kind of like a, a Snapchat filter, and after a little bit more masculine, a little bit more natural male face. Okay, then we're going to jump into this one. This one has a reference, so I'll work with the reference later. So here, very pretty female face going on. I've increased the size of the nose. It's not a big nose size increase. It's a it's like a proportionate adult nose. Right. Extending the distance between the nose and the mouth. <clears throat> 
And then filter, liquefy, shrinking the size of the eyes, which was too big. I get it, you guys like drawing pretty boys, but get over it. Get over the pretty boy look, because it's just, it's so, it's so noob. It's such a noob thing to do, to always draw pretty boys, no matter what you're drawing, your boys are always pretty looking. And what happened to the rugged? What happened to the natural? You can still pull that off. And if you've got, like, idols, like, um, like, I got nothing against her, um, and I, you know, I don't even know her, so I can't really talk shit about somebody I don't know, but Charlie Bowater. She draws faces, and she has drawn the faces the same way for like 10 years now. Um, and a lot of people look up to her style, and I see that as, de as debilitating for students who look up to her style and try to emulate it perfectly, because she can only draw one kind of face. I'm not saying she can only draw one kind of face. She's been drawing only one kind of face. Um, and I don't encourage that. I, I want you guys to try variety in, in head sizes, variety in eye types, and sometimes there's a downturned eye, sometimes they're... You know, not all male faces have this perfectly almond-shaped eye. Some eyes, especially males, have a downturn to them. This really, really strong eyebrow arc needs to go. Okay, a thinner upper lip. So you actually are looking at a male, you're not looking at a girl with a really, really strong jawline. If you can't draw a male when they need you to draw one, if you can only draw one type or a really pretty looking person, then you're just a sketch artist or an anime artist who can render a bit. You're not a full on, you know, you're not a creator in, in the sense that you can create multiple different kinds of beings or multiple personalities or, or multiple types of uh, like a more variety in your in, in the people that you uh, that you populate your universe with. You're just drawing, to, you just have templates and you're accessorizing like the start of a game when you can just change up features ever so slightly and choose a hair color. All right, so it feels like I know this person now. It feels like we know them. He's still very, very cute. Kind of gave him some forehead space. See how cute he looked before though? Do you see that, what I mean by that Charlie Bowater face? It's like, no, no offense to her, I don't know her, she doesn't know me, but she has a very specific style and it's out there publicly and I'm discussing it. It's very, very girly, very, very specific kind of face that's repeated multiple times. This nose, very, very, very small, eyes very big, kind of has like a bloated forehead. So the reason why I regretted raising the forehead line is because men actually, actually do have low hairlines. When they're young and when they get older, you can raise that up. Right, just lowering that to sit under the ears. Nice thick neckline. Chin is very strong. You can thin out the lips. He's not ugly. Of course, everything is ugly compared to an elf. Everything is ugly compared to this, but he's not ugly. And students are starting to think that this is the defined word. This is this is ugly. If you if you saw a guy like this in real life, he he'd break your heart. Because this is actually handsome if you were to transfer it into the real world. This is deformed if you transfer it into the real world. Right. Do you want realistic beauty? Do you want accessible beauty? Do you want your audience to meet your character? Or do you want always to sit through this really, really distant, cold filter of anime influence for the rest of your life? Okay? So stop it. Another really, really big thing with male faces is these cheekbones. You guys really overdo the cheekbones. They're very circular. They're very feminine. Male cheekbones are very flat and low. They're kind of beside the nose, not under the eyes. So this shading that you've done here, it needs to, I'll use this brush, it needs to be a little bit more like that. So the cheekbones are less high. So we're actually darkening the upper area here. So we're not drawing or not creating this feeling like this character has really, really pretty female cheekbone injections inserts. See that? It's very rounded, pretty cheekbone, that very vogue, large cheekbone that you got going on over here. This is very feminine. All right, and what we did was closed it off. We lowered it, so now we have more like that. All right, any questions at all? Do you feel like, do you know what I mean when I say I, I feel like I know this character? He's still got humongous eyes. He's still, he's still got this, this really, really familiar face to him. He still has very, very handsome uh, features. 
I'm just going to smudge out the eyebrow because overdrawn eyebrows are just icky. Eyebrows don't just, they're not stuck on, they grow gradually. There's hair growing around everywhere. Um, something very feminine but can be added to male faces is a large lower eyelid. But be careful not to make it look like he's got eyeshadow on and all that business. Okay, march down. All right, let's move on. Uh, so this character right here, nose, looks very, very feminine. I understand you're working with an anime influence, which needs to go ASAP. Uh, you can come back when you're ready for it. Really, really feminine cheekbones again, especially on the outside kind of increasing and raising the nose up. Lips are okay. Talked about how anime is not really allowed on my channel. So, um, so you know, work with that. Don't post any more anime. This is very, very anime. It doesn't matter if you've rendered it. It feels very, very anime and it's not really realistically rendered. You're kind of just throwing in cell shades. And if you're having trouble rendering something and making it look like it has volume, do a 14-day challenge. Get started. Every single artist should have a 14-day challenge under their belt. Right. Nostrils are higher than the septum. The eyebrows look a little bit feminine, especially that white under the eyebrow. It's just why is light why is light specifically added here if there's a shadow right above it? What's what's causing this? What is the reason behind this other than that you've drawn women for a long time and that's how you've drawn women you place the light under the eyebrow. There's no explanation for why you need light under the eyebrow and that's that's what what it's resulting in is this um very feminine eyebrow shape. And again, students wonder why the faces don't read. So I've shrunk in the eyes. I've tried my best. Like I've tried my best to work with what I have here. The background is way too light. You're using lines. You're drawing. You're using the same size brush to render hair. You're you have a long way to go with your fundamentals. But um, these changes for male faces are universal. It should work no matter what I'm correcting. Is what I'm trying to explain. Okay. Very feminine cheekbones. Very rounded. Very pretty. After a larger nose width. Uh, here, what's happening is the same thing. Um, I'm going to try to do this with liquify first. No. So bringing these closer together to complete the rotation. The eye was a little bit lagging behind. And then pushing the eye up forward to be a little closer to that nose. <clears throat> those cheekbone changes <laughs> stop with the anime clap clap <laughs> exactly um, then because one eyebrow has been brought forward you kind of showed too much of the far eyebrow so I'm just going to give it a quick little shave like that okay and then the nose I'm going to try to close the distance between the nose and the eye line. And then flatten this brow. Raise the nostril up. Make sure the septum is lower. And I'm just trying to close this distance. As for the amount of face to head, you have less face and more head. Make this more three-dimensionally accurate. don't want to change who he is, so I won't fan out the nostrils too much. 
but just closing this space right here. Okay. Before I was a little low, after we raise the eye up, see how low it was? If this was front view, one eye would be way lower than the other. I'm just going to tuck in the lips. See that really, really feminine eyebrow arc? That should have been closed off way, way after. Way more after. So just flattening. And getting rid of that highlight. Much better. Okay. And another thing is that in this angle, we would see much less of the far eye. better. So before, after, before, after. Getting the eye closer to the nose. The eye still feels a little bit large. The eye itself, the whole eye, and the reason why he may look a little feminine is because the upper eyelid space is so present. Looks a bit like makeup. So I'm actually going to hood the eye just a bit before, after, a lot less feminine. All right, let me zoom in. Before, after, before, after. These are some major, major fundamental rotation changes as well as beauty changes. So keep, keep that in mind. Keep that, you know, keep in mind that it's two fundamentals we're dealing with right now, two heavy hitters before, after. Um, as for the mouth, let me deal with the too much face for head thing. Uh, as for the mouth, I feel like you need to look up a good reference. Um, the Cupid's bow is missing and it's actually very visible with side view. Extreme side view, Cupid's bow is very, very present. Before, after. primate look that someone mentioned is because of the distance. It's a bit too much distance between the nose and the mouth. That should fix that. Okay, I'm going to complete before and after. Before, after. Right, be careful with all this stuff, you guys. So it's a lot of fundamentals to, to look out for. Oh, no, no. So any questions at all? I really wanted to cover this today with you. So let's let's bring this guy over here. Um, and just talk about him. Alright, so it's mostly from front view that we see the eyes inside the nose line. So this would be nose, nose, and then eyes, eyes. So it's mostly from front view again that we see this. Um, but side view, we tend to tend to kind of get a little glimpse of it. See how it's at or, or lower or higher then? And if this was front view, we'd actually see the eyes way closer. The distance between the nose and the mouth is a bit extensive. Sometimes you get people who have pretty thick lips who are um, seen as beautiful. And it's because of their half feminine, half masculine feature. And they look a bit androgynous, and that's great for fashion. Um, but, uh, but what we want to see is um, 
ban me like one of your French girls. <laughs> Mika! <laughs> What's going on with Mika? Um, uh, so uh, when we have androgynous, and this is a little talk on androgyny that I'm going to cover, you have to start off, you have to have a starting gender. You have to have a starting point. Um, if you don't have a starting gender, then you get androgyny, and it looks really, really weird, and it's a, a beginner androgyny, and I don't like using the word beginner because it's a little bit malicious, and I don't like calling people beginners or noobs or anything like that, but there is a very defined beginner androgyny, which is just mistakes. It's not calculated androgyny. It's mistakes that they use, a, I don't know, gender movement for as an excuse not to fix. It's a very, very obvious androgyny, and it is this. All right? It's a mistake because you're drawing a female while not really knowing, um, uh, you know, that you're accidentally drawing the female on top of the male, but you don't know it because all you know how to draw is a female, so when you tell your brain start drawing, it starts drawing a female. A brain doesn't just have draw mode, it has subject draw, to draw subject mode. You can't just employ drawing and not employ the subject with which you have been drawing the entire time, so you start using by proxy the last thing you draw, drew to draw the new thing. So let's say you've drawn a certain kind of fab, like a certain kind of fashion style for a shirt, and you've, that's all you've drawn for a long time. You're expected to draw a new type of shirt. You will base the new shirt off the old shirt's design because that's all you've ever drawn. You're drawing mode proxies through the last design. That, as well as predispositions and bad habits, all come together to end up with really, really bad androgyny. Stop drawing girly men, because I know you didn't intend to. You want to draw a man who actually looks like a love interest, who actually looks like a man, who looks like he's got his hormones on all in the right places. If you are employed to draw a male, you can't go in and superimpose your accidental, uh, you know, beginner androgyny on top of everything you design. If all you've drawn is females, the next time, the next time you draw a male, you are absolutely susceptible to drawing an overly, overly feminine male. You will, you just have to expect it. It's just going to happen, master or not. It's just the last thing you drew gets superimposed on top, and it just happens. It just, it's just that. That's how the brain works. So please make sure that you are listing things like this. Forehead is low. Forehead is higher than cheekbone. Cheekbone is low. Jawline is wide. Neck can be as wide as the jawline if you're drawing an athletic character. Uh, mouth is less thick. Mouth is less beauteous, less juicy, less plump, less out there, and less feminine. Upper lip is thinner than lower lip. Distance between nose and mouth has to be extended. Large chin, smaller eyes, no eyebrow arc. Even though he has an eyebrow arc, he does technically have a flat eyebrow. But again, he's androgynous. He has a certain level of androgyny, which is confusing this whole lesson right now. Eyes are closer together, sometimes closer than the nose. And right now we're talking about cute men. What happens? What are you guys going to do? I wonder what Charlie Bowater does where she has to draw like an old man. Or not nothing against you, Charlie. I'm sure you're a wonderful person. But I wonder what happens when it's time to draw an old male. Um, a really, really just haggard old male, like ugly. Is that, is that right? Is that the right word, haggard? Um, or, or just, you know, straight up Tony from New York with a cigarette in his mouth and a wife beater covered in, in grease stains, hairy chest, balding. Like, what do you do? You're going to give him, like, perfectly triangular features? No, you have to employ the ogre. You have to employ the inversion of the triangle of beauty, all right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta invert the alien. You gotta go into the ogre. Small eyes, large nose, large mouth. What happens when you can no longer draw with that last thing that you drew and the thing that you've only been drawing since drawing first captured you and you started becoming an artist and calling yourself one. Um, other things uh, would be a shorter forehead sometimes, uh, very, very square features squared off between the temple and the jawline and the chin. Um, just, uh, you know, just, just please follow this list. It's an actual list you have to go through. It's a checklist. Like astronauts go through checklists every single day. You have to go through this checklist. I mean, these people are geniuses and they're floating in space and they still depend on lists to get them through their day and make sure their workflow is consistent and efficient. You are no exception. You are required to keep your workflow organized. If the last thing you drew was females, if the only thing you've been drawing is females, please, please, please make sure 
that you are going through this checklist to make sure that you are not accidentally pulling from the template of elf or beauteous female uh, beauty triangle golden ratio kind of business okay um uh that's it thank you everyone for what i'm joking any questions I'm not going to correct this guy. I'm going to let you go ahead and correct your piece based off what I described today. Um, let me see if there are more moments like this in the community. <coughs> um, it's a really female read, and that's because everything is just in the right spot. People like drawing females more than males because it's, it's just, you know, it's easier because we we like women and the universe has always loved women and women have always been beautiful and yes diversify your portfolio absolutely freaking lutely um how would you give a male face handsome cheekbones if they're not rounded are they just higher sharper uh i would say the cheekbones for a male are definitely there but i wouldn't make them rounded i'd make them a little bit more jagged and i'd make them lower than the brow bone the brow bone can't be higher can't be lower than the cheekbones if that's the case that means it's a female forehead so it's all based off the brow bone so it's not a question of the cheekbones and men don't really get complimented for their cheekbones you can say he has a chiseled face but men are complicated uh, com com complicated yes they are uh, but men are complimented more on their jawline and their you know you know that chiseled jawline or that chin really than his cheekbones like when was the last time you complimented a guy based off his cheekbones and if you were were you really referring to the bone structure of his cheeks or his jawline or his chin or, or the jowls or something like that is that what you were referring to because when we say a chiseled face we're mostly talking about that really really fat jawline uh zarish aftab i notice you <laughs> how to draw good wrinkles uh depends on the age the thinner uh, the wrinkles the older the person so the more pencil like the wrinkles the older the person because those are real constant wrinkles instead of just laugh wrinkles caused by expressions um so for females um uh that are smiling you want to use a th even males that are smiling or younger uh, age groups that are smiling that you're designing have to have a long larger brush is it appropriate to post line drawings of original cartoons in the community or are you looking for more fully rendered paintings? You can look through the, um, you can look through the rules. If you feel like the rules allow this, then you can post it. Also, I uh, love the rugged male that's not handsome, but just the whole package. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be handsome. It just has to be 100% man. Um, I'm having trouble with drawing eyes because they look flat. What are things I can do to fix this? So before I do, uh, before I answer any more questions, I want to show you. I've been watching Narcos. Um, and um, there's this guy named uh, General Carrillo. Uh, Carrillo. And he is, he is, he is all man. He is 100% man. And um, just look at his face. Right. He has pretty feminine cheekbones. Again, feminine cheekbones happen in the real world, but they're still low, and look how bony and squared they look. Look at this just exact square look. Like, it's a full-on square hollow. See those squares? But they're high. They're high. They're very Mayan, um, very Latin, but they're, 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 they're very squared. He does have a rounded face, very strong jawline. He has a rounded face. I wouldn't say the most chiseled face. My first impression of him was, that, oh, he looks very feminine. But the more you got to know him, right? Flat, large distance, eyes way in, strong uh, laugh lines and wrinkles. This guy is just all man. I could just sit here all day staring, <laughs> especially in, in the context of the of the, of the show. Um, okay, so this is an example of a little bit of androgyny, but still 100% man. Um, yeah, Narcos is amazing. Uh, Mr. Rack, I'm having trouble with drawing eyes because they look flat. What are things I can do for this? Uh, do some form studies of spheres. Do some uh, pupil-free, iris-free eyes, John. So draw eyes for a while without irises or pupils because they're getting in the way. What you need to know how to do is wrap the eyelids around the base shape of the eyeball. 
and uh, work from there. You'll just start to improve that, that template on which you add pupils and iris later and make sure you're adding the iris smaller than you usually do. Um, are there going to be any challenges coming up in the near future? There was one that I was writing up. Um, I've, the summer is just so incredibly busy. Um, so I, you know, kayaking and all the outdoor sports that I've been trying to keep myself doing uh, for my health and all of that. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I haven't really had time to just sit down and think about it because I want to really blow your minds like we did with the, um, you guys seem to have a lot of fun. You really like the brief that I wrote uh, for the um, ancient design, ancient weapon design. Uh, so, you know, we'll see, we'll see what I, what, what things look like. I am still writing my book. So anytime I have to write, I'm just writing and working on my final draft. Uh, so I'm not promising it's going to be this month, but it'll definitely be definitely be coming up. But I did say that it'll be a while before we have our next challenge. And if we do have another challenge, it'll be a contest challenge. Again, so people win some more, win private sessions with me. I just finished with Finn, uh, who won our last challenge, and he's just been improving so much. Um, think all man from every race and sex. <laughs> um, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, a bit feminine, but very small eyes, low eyebrows. Uh, can be high though sometimes if he's making the face, making the poopy face. Some men kind of force their eyebrow to a little be a little bit higher, or they kind of do the smolder, where their inner eyebrows go up, and uh, and they, uh, they it looks like poopy face. I call it because it looks like they're going to the bathroom in their diaper. Um, so I'll let you guys go. So for anyone interested in joining uh, our classes or handing in stuff for critique for the person who asked me on my channel, you go to istabak.com, click on the little Google Plus icon to join, um, and that's how you get in the community. Join, follow the rules, please read the rules. The rules are uh, all here. You just click on the About Community and just read. Read through this. Make sure you are reading through this consistently. Um, if it, they change sometimes and if your stuff is rejected don't take it out on my mods my mods are wonderful people they give their time to make sure this community is running uh, if you have any problem with the rules ask politely ask why did your piece get rejected most surely it's that you maybe didn't write anything or you broke one of the rules if you consistently break rules you will be banned from the community so I'm just giving you guys some warnings um, if I do end up putting up a, a poll or anything for the upcoming challenge, maybe at the end of next month or beginning of next month, um, you will see it uh, pinned at the top of the community, so keep that in mind. And uh, Patreon. For anyone interested in Patreon, you guys have a lot of options. Um, either support or be part of the uh, educational categories available on Patreon. I just assigned our latest uh, assignment for this month that will be due at the end of the month. Maybe the stream will be on the 5th of next month, uh, not the 5th, the 7th of next month. Um, and uh, it'll be like a full on stream. So you still have a month if you want to join now as an apprentice to work on your homework. It's been probably a couple days since I posted it. Um, it's quite extensive homework. Um, I will see you guys on Tuesday the 17th at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'll try my best to keep things early at 4. Um, that way everyone has time to go watch sunsets and whatnot. Uh, so I'll let you guys go. Good luck with all your, all your submissions and everything. Bye guys.